What's up guys, CP Modi here and back in 2015 I made a video comparing low-end GPUs to high-end integrated GPUs. With advancements of technology, is this argument even still valid here in 2017? Should we buy low-end GPUs or just buy higher-end CPUs with higher-end integrated graphics? Today we're going to find out exactly that. Now for a long time, if you were going to be playing video games, you would never consider an integrated graphics card, mainly because it just doesn't deliver the performance that a dedicated and discreet unit can actually deliver. But with the advancements that we've been seeing lately, is there really that much of an argument anymore? So at the time of recording, AMD Zen has just launched and unfortunately they have not released their APUs yet. So we'll be configuring our system with the Core i7-7700K which has the highest end Intel HD 630 graphics at the time of recording. Yes, I do know that AMD does have some pretty good offerings in the APU front, but at the time of recording, the APUs haven't come out based on the new Zen platform and if we do our numbers on the old platform, well, they're just gonna go out of date really, really fast. And I really just can't recommend you buy an AMD APU at the time of recording. Definitely when, again, the new Zen stuff comes out, I do recommend it, but at the time of recording, we're gonna focus on our i7. Now, speaking of this i7 and the HD630 graphics, in terms of the specs department, we are looking at a base speed of 350 megahertz with a boost of 1.15 gigahertz. It uses the same shared memory as your system, so if you have 32 gigabytes of DDR4, RAM, you're going to be taking a slice of that and using that as VRAM. It doesn't have its own VRAM on board, so do keep that in mind. However, with that being said, in recent years with the move to DDR4 technology, it means we can have much faster RAM, which should benefit our integrated graphics. With some DDR4 RAM kits actually coming out at the same speed or even faster in some cases than the stock memory configurations on dedicated video cards themselves. Now, before you do go yell at me in the comment sections, yes, I do know there is a massive difference between between GDDR5X VRAM and also to DDR4 RAM. I know there's a massive difference, but at the end of the day, it is sort of a comparison that can technically be drawn because they are relatively fast memories. But yes, they are completely different memory technologies. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and take a look at our first set of numbers with just the iGPU on our Core i7 7700s. And taking a look at these numbers, it's a little bit on the disappointing side. Even though we threw the fastest RAM we could at 3000 megahertz at this guy and all the other benefits we could throw with the latest technology, unfortunately, we weren't able to get over medium settings 720p and even at that settings, we weren't even able to crack 60 FPS. Definitely dropping down to lower resolutions and also to lower settings, we would be seeing a little bit better performance, but at the end of the day, in these AAA titles, it just really wasn't playing ball for us. Do keep in mind that we were only testing AAA titles. If you were to go ahead and play things like MMO style games that are fairly simple to run, like, you know, CSGO, and also to other games that are more indie titles that are just generally easier to run, the integrated graphics would have a much easier easier time, but when it comes to AAA super high-end titles, the integrated graphics do start to suffer quite a bit. However, if we do go ahead and throw $120 at this problem being in the form of the GT1030, we do actually see some improvements here. Once we do disable the iGPU and throw in the video card, we see, well, some numbers actually step up. Now, we did check out the GT1030 in this video right here, so if you do want to check it out, you can right there, but overall, the performance on these low to medium settings wasn't really half that bad, and everything became so much more playable. Even in these AAA titles, things were a lot better than if we were just using the integrated graphics card. And even though this is a product that I really recommend no one actually buying, if you are stuck between using an iGPU and nothing at all, I do recommend grabbing yourself the GT1030 because it is a fairly budget offering and offers you a really big step up over the integrated graphics. However, with it being said, if we do jump up to something like a 1060 or even just a 1050, boom, looking at at these numbers right here, they are way better and it's only a few extra hundred dollars over the 1030 that we're spending to get these much better performances. So if we take a look at these price to performances here, we see that going for something like a 1050 or even a 1060, so dollar per FPS, is way better on this side than if we were to stay down with our 1030. But at the end of the day, a video card's going to definitely help out either way. Also too, jumping over to the pro application side with the GPU being the 1030, I found 
way better performance inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects than if I was only using the integrated GPU. Being both of those programs CUDA accelerated thanks to the fact that we're using an NVIDIA video card, I was able to take advantage of the CUDA cores available on the 1030. Whilst the 1030 doesn't exactly have a lot of CUDA cores, at the end of the day having some is better than having none. And whilst I didn't actually measure any of the differences, I did notice in just general editing, moving around the timeline, scrubbing and stuff like that, having the dedicated video card was way better than just running on internal graphics there. Temperatures on the CPU package also too didn't change too much, so whether I was using the video card or the integrated graphics, I didn't notice a massive difference between CPU temperature and also to GPU temperature. There wasn't too much of a difference there when I was running the iGPU. So if you are worried about temperatures running both the CPU and iGPU at full load, I really didn't notice that much of an issue. And even the stock cooler could have done it, no worries. So I guess in conclusion, in 2017, is a low-end iGPU worth it? And I'd have to say probably not really. Whilst you could definitely get by on some indie titles and MMO games like again CSGO or some other basic type of titles, you could easily get away with the iGPU. At the end of the day, if you are looking at more higher-end games and just playing a lot more uh, better games, at the end of the day, a GPU will definitely help. Even something as basic and cheap as a GT 1030 definitely adds a lot more FPS that you just wouldn't be getting without having it installed. But it does raise the question why you would be spending so much on a CPU anyway without actually buying a GPU. With Ryzen 3 recently coming onto the market, it makes for an epic little gaming system. And if you were to drop back from the i7, which is what we had here today, the money that you save could probably pick up a mid-range video card. So go for a Ryzen 3 and say something like a 1050 or 1060 and you'd have a way better gaming experience than what we had here with just the i7 or even the i7 plus the GT 1030. So when it comes to it, is the iGPU any good? Yeah, it's definitely gotten a lot better from where we were. But at the end of the day, compared to just having a dedicated discrete video card, it's nothing in comparison. And I do recommend planning out a balanced build rather than going for the highest end CPU and not really worrying about the GPU with Ryzen 3 offering a great value there. Nevertheless guys, if you want to find out more about Ryzen 3, check out that video right there, should have been linked down below. If you want to grab yourself the i7-7700K, if I can even say that, i7-7700K, or the GT 1030, I'll leave them linked down below, but let me know what you think down below. Would you go with a lower end CPU from the Ryzen family and a nice higher end GPU, or would you still go down the line of the high end i7 CPU? Nevertheless guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.